Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I have for you a video on how I take care of my hermit crabs. The species I have is the Quenopita compressus. I have three of them from when they were very little and I kept them in a the plastic tub. It all went well at first, but they are now too big for the stop and it became impractical, so I started searching for a second hand glass tank. Most of them were too small or too overpriced or too big, so I went for a good priced but bigger tank. Its dimensions are 100 by 40 by 50 centimeters and it has its pros and cons. It's a bit more difficult to keep the humidity at the right percentage. I'm now at 65%, so a bit too low. So I have to figure out a way to lift that up. The setup is still not finished, but this is all I had laying around and I'm planning on putting in more leaf litter and moss. The moss will maybe also help with the humidity. The substrate is a mixture of coco fiber and sand and is nicely moist. The pros of a bigger tank is that I can put in more hermit crabs. They are a social species that can be found in large groups, so I will be adding more over time. If you can believe Google, this tank can fit up to 20 crabs, but that's maybe a bit too many and I was thinking of keeping 10 at max. Next time I'm going to an expo, I will probably buy 3 more and see how it goes. I will now show you some footage of the little crabbies and give you more information about this species. So, the Quenobita compressus. Common name the Ecuadorian hermit crab. They can be found in Peru, Ecuador, Chile, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, El Salvador and Mexico. And are one of the smallest terrestrial hermit crabs that are kept as a pet. They live on the Pacific seashore and are frequently found in sandy areas or in rainforests. On average the carapace ranges from 1.2 to 1.8 cm in length. They don't have a complete exoskeleton and have to protect their soft and vulnerable abdomen by using gastropod shells. Their color varies from blue-green when they're younger to pale grey, black or brown when they're adult. Their lifespan can be more than 30 years in the wild, but in captivity it's more around 10 to 15 years. These hermits are not really that much of a hermit, but are very social and active. They're mostly active at night, but it all depends on temperature and humidity. In the wild it's too hot during daytime and at night the temperature drops and the humidity rises. So they prefer to be more active at night. But in captivity their temperature and humidity mostly stays the same and they can also be very active during the day. I keep them at 26 degrees Celsius and they like their humidity 70% and higher. They are a burrowing species and like to burrow down to rest and protect themselves from predators and dehydration. They also burrow down when they are about to molt and can even stay under for a few months. These species are also very good climbers and in Latin America they are also called tree crabs. In the small tub I didn't really have enough space to give them enough climbing materials and that was also the reason I went for a bigger tank. I gave them multiple platforms and a hammock and they really liked it. In the future I plan to give them even more options, but for now they seem to enjoy themselves with what's already available. Beside a lot of substrate and climbing material, they also need some hiding spots and what they call a shell shop. As a hiding spot they can use the wooden ramp or hide behind the rope thingies. I'm planning to buying some more coconuts, as I know they like to hide in them as well. Now, the shell shop. It's a place where they can change their shell. I use a bowl where I place a good amount of different shells in. I give different sizes and shapes and they can pick whatever they like. It's important when they grow bigger they can pick a shell that's big enough for them and you will often see them switching around. Without this little marketplace, they will try to steal each other's shells and we don't want them to fight and feel stressed. 
Don't give them big heavy shells or shells made out of glass. It will take up too much energy to carry them around. And the glass ones make them feel too vulnerable and stressed. The Quenobita compressors live near the seashore. Therefore, in captivity, it's important to give them access to fresh water and seawater. These are both crucial, otherwise they will die. There are recipes to prepare salt water with instant ocean marine salt. Don't use simple aquarium salts or table salt. But I don't live too far from the sea, so I get my water from there. It's best to give them fresh water from bottled spring water. Tap water contains chlorine and that's toxic for your crabs. Also don't use distilled water due to the lack of minerals in it. Give them a bowl where they can fully submerge in with a safe way to exit. They have a low resistance to water loss so they like to fill up their shell with water. For both ionic or temperature balance. These hermit crabs are scavengers eating plant and animal material such as that animals, feces, leaves, fruits, vegetables, and other plants. Quenobitu species are known to be picky eaters and experiments have shown that they prefer food that they have not recently eaten. So it's a good idea to switch it up a bit now and then. This species tend to enjoy protein-rich food more than other hermit crab species, so it's recommended to always give them some protein. They also need their calcium, so I have a cuttle bone in there and also give them eggshells from time to time. At the moment, their favorites are carrots, cucumber, peanut butter and rat runners. I feed them around three times a week. It depends on how big and active they are. Younger crabs need more food than adult ones. They are also aggressive eaters and it's important to not let them starve. Otherwise, they will turn on each other and eat their tank mates. Remove the leftover food after 24 hours to prevent mold and bad stuff from growing. And don't forget to remove their poopies. It's sometimes hard to spot them in the substrate, but I keep a bunch of springtails inside their tank to help me keep it clean and when I see a bunch of springtails sitting on some yuckiness, I remove it. Or you can replace some layers of substrate with some fresh substrates every two months. Now, I'm not going into on how to breed them, as I don't have experience with it and from what I can find on the internet, it's also not easy to breed them. Same with sexing them, I'm also not experienced enough with them to explain it. Males are mostly larger and females have some dots on their specific pair of legs. I tried looking at them but they are too shy to stretch themselves out while I'm holding them and one even pinched me without wanting to lose its grip for a few minutes. It wasn't a pleasant feeling so I waited for it to stop pinching me and put it back in its tank. There are also some theories going on that hermit crabs are intersex and they can change their sex after a molt. There are still studies ongoing to prove this theory. So if that is the case, I'm not even going to bother mine to see what they are. I really hope you liked this video about the little hermits. I will give more updates on how they are doing in the new tank and when I put in more stuff or new crabbies. If you like this kind of content then maybe consider subscribing to the channel and give this video a like. I'll be back next week with more spider room stuff. Toodles!